الحمد لله الحمد لله فاطر الوجود من العدم وجاعل النور من الظلم ومخرج الصبر من الألم ومخرج التوبة على الندم فنشكره على المصائب كما نشكره على النعم ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الأكرم ذو الشرف الأشم والنور الأتم وكتاب المحكم خير ولد آدم الذي بشر به عيسى بن مريم ودعا لبعثته إبراهيم عليه السلام حين يرفع قواعد بيت الله المحرم فنصلي ونسلم ونبارك على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد بن عبد الله وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة في الدين ضلالة وكل ضلال في النار أوصيكم وإياي بتقوى الله وحسن عبادته All praises due to Allah the most gracious the most merciful and peace and blessings be upon his last and final messenger He who Allah guides will never be misguided and he who Allah misguides will never be guided Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an for nearly one-third of the Qur'an he talks about the Day of Judgment and what happens after we will all pass and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to try to give us insight on the difficulty of that day and the difficulty of that struggle he says فِي يَوْمٍ مِقْدَارُهُ خَمْسِينَ أَلْفَ سَنَةً إِنَّمَا يَرَوْنَهُ بَعِيدًا وَنَرَاهُ قَرِيبًا On this day, this day, the length of just this day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah is going to be 50,000 years. How long will any of us live? 10, 20, 30 more years. We'll reach 100, 200. What is that in comparison just to that day? Should we not prepare? Should we not prepare for that day and that struggle? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what the situation of the people that transgress are. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was very specific. He said those that transgress and not those that disbelieve. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, يَوَدُّ الْمُجْرِمُ لَوْ يَفْتَدِي مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمَئِذٍ بِبَنِيهِ وصاحبته وأخيه وفصيلته التي تؤويه ومن في الأرض جميعا ثم ينجيه الله سبحانه وتعالى he says on that day the transgressors will say oh Allah take the most valuable thing what's the most valuable thing in any one of our lives I want you to ask yourself that question parents ask yourself what's the most valuable thing in your life for many of us, it's our children. The transgressors on that day will say, Take my children. Take my spouse. Take my brother. The one that I grew up with. Lived in the same house with. Take him. Take my family. Take everyone on earth. Just protect me from that day. Just protect me from that trial. And the Prophet Sallallahu tells us about that day. That on that day the sun will come close to our heads. And some of us will sweat to the point where the sweat reaches our ankles. And the hadith continues and says some of us our sweat will reach our knees. And some of us our sweat will reach our throats. And some of us we will be drowning in our sweat. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala protect every last one of us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has an exception to give every last one of us hope. To put to instill hope within all of us because the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is filled with love and filled with hope. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about a profound hadith. He says, Sabatun Dhulluhum Allahu fi dhillih Yawma la dhilla illa dhillah. Seven people, groups of individuals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shade on the day of judgment when there is no shade but His shade. When the sun is super close to our heads. When we see people around us drowning in their own sins because of their sweat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves this group of people. Who are they? How can we be amongst them? 
Let's look into this hadith. The first group of people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about is Imam Adil. A righteous leader. And when I say a leader, I don't mean the president of a country or the mayor or the so on. Every single one of us, without exception, is a leader in one aspect or another. Fathers and mothers, you are a leader in your home. Individuals, managers, you are a leader at work. Every last one of us is a position of leadership. And the Prophet ﷺ says it in a different hadith. كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُونَ عَنْ رِعَايَتِهِ Every one of you is a shepherd and every one of you is responsible for their flock. So the, Allah, the Prophet ﷺ tells us in this hadith, the first group of individuals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shade is people in positions of leadership that are righteous. And the Prophet ﷺ says, اتقوا الله وعدلوا بين أولادكم Have fear in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And be just, be fair with even your children. Be fair with even your children. This is how you can fall into this hadith, this group of individuals. And he says, إِنَّ Allah يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to have justice and excellence in every aspect of our lives. And he says, in a hadith, he says, إِنَّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَلَى مَنَابِرِ مِنْ نُورِ عَنْ يَمِينِ الرَّحْمَانِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ Truly the ones that have justice, that are fair, they will stand, they will sit on thrones of light on the right of Ar-Rahman on the Day of Judgment. And the reason that many of the scholars believe this was the first hadith, this is the first group of individuals, is because this is amongst the hardest group to fall under. To fall under having justice in every action that we take takes a large, a high degree of taqwa. You have to be conscious about every relationship, every action that you take. Every statement that comes out of your mouth has to be calculated. Because you know, if it's not just, I don't fall under this hadith. So you hold yourself accountable. But he continues, the hadith continues. The second group of individuals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shade. وَشَابُ النَّشْأَ فِي بِعِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى And a righteous young individual that is brought up in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala time and time again in the Qur'an gave us evidence about the value of a youth that is righteous. The value of a youth that does good. And, he, and I will begin with Abu al Anbiya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, قَالُوا مَنْ فَعْلَ هَذَا بِآلِهَتَيْنَا إِنَّهُ لَمِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا فَتًا يَذْكُرْهُمْ يَقُولُ لَهُ إِبْرَاهِيمٌ He said, who talked about our, the, the, the tribe of Sayyidina Ibrahim? After Sayyidina Ibrahim had destroyed their idols. He said, who destroyed our idols? He said, we heard of a young man, someone that is young, Fata, a youth. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Nasrani Shabab. The youth are the ones that gave me victory. Why youth? Us young individuals, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with time and strength and ability. And we will be questioned about how we deal with our youth. About what we accomplished, what we did. Parents, for those of us that have passed our youth, you have children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shabu nasha'a fi ta'atillah. They are raised in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who raised them? Parents. 
the question for us as youth, how are we using our youth? How are we using our time? How are we taking advantage of our strength? And parents, how are you instilling this into your child? How are you instilling Islam, being righteous in everything that they do? So that they can be shaded. Allow your intention to be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so that they can be shaded on the day where there is no shade but Allah's shade. So the question becomes, how am I going to instill that in my child? And for those of us that are young, how am I going to instill that within myself? And the way we instill it first and foremost is by looking at the seerah of the Prophet The Prophet raised a generation that changed the world. SubhanAllah, 40 years after the Prophet had passed, nearly half of the known world at the time had become Muslim. In 40 years, it's miraculous. What changed? How did these Bedouins that had no civilization, that had nothing, change the world? Is it because of what the Prophet ﷺ instilled in them? He instilled with them in them excellence. And he instilled with them urgency. The urgency to make change in every aspect of their life. So they did. And they accomplished great things. The third group of individuals. وَرَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ فِي المساجد. An individual, a man or a woman, but in this hadith it says a man whose heart is close to the masajid. Who is constantly coming to the masajid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something beautiful in the Quran. He, everything in the Quran is beautiful, but this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, فِي بُيُوتٍ أَذِنَ اللَّهُ أَن تُرْفَعَ وَيُذْكَرُ فِيهَا اسْمُ يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ فِيهَا بِالْغُدُوِّ وَالْآثَارِ Who? Who calls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In these houses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has built, right away Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, رِجَالٌ لَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تُجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْعٌ عَن ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Men that don't allow business, trading, to make them forget that Allah subhan- about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the paradigm shift that we must have. To realize that our life is so short. The money that we are going to make, millions of dollars. At the end of the day, one of two things will happen. Either we will leave it, or it will leave us. So should we not focus on what will stay with us forever? Should we not focus on where every last one of us will end up? The fourth group of individuals. And this is a group of individuals that every single one of us can strive to right now. Even as we're leaving the masjid. The fourth group Two people, two individuals They gather for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And they leave for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And the paradigm shift that we have to have Is look to your brother to your right And look at the brother to your left Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً that person sitting next to you, that's your brother. That's your brother. And when we begin to instill that in our hearts, and realize that the individuals next to us aren't just Muslims or individuals that we don't know, but we begin to live like they are our brothers. That we will treat them as such. And we won't walk out of this masjid without saying salam to as many of our brothers that we can. Then and only then will we fall into this hadith and gather that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says. And Allah subhanahu wa taala He says in the Quran, "Al akhila yawma idin baghum li baghin adu illa al muttaqin." Allah subhanahu wa taala reminding us of the day of judgment. He's saying the companions. Ask yourself, who is your best friend? Who is your greatest companion? 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us, you and your best friend, the person that you will trust with your money, with your house, you and them on the day of judgment will be will be against one another. Will be angry at one another. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave an exception. The exception is those that are righteous. And if those are righteous, they would fall under the hadith of gathering for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leaving for His sake. Insha'Allah, in the second part of the khutbah, we continue to talk about the seven groups of individuals and how we can fall into one of them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all of us to be amongst those seven individuals. Alhamdulillahi na'hamaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiru wa na'udhu billahi min sururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina We began today's khutbah talking about the day of judgment and talking about a day that is as long as 50,000 years and on that day the sun will be as close to our, will be close to our heads and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant shade to seven groups of individuals he spoke about the first four groups. Now we talk about the last three, and then we talk about our homework. And how every single one of us, inshallah, will strive to become at least one of the, a, a part of one of these groups. The fifth group of individuals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about, He says, وَرَجُلٌ دَعَتْهُمْ رَأَةٌ ذَاتَ مَنْصَبٍ وَجَمَالٍ فَقَالَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهِ an individual that someone in a position of power a woman in a position of power and a position of beauty calls him to do something that is unbefitting and the, the, the ulama have talked about this hadith this aspect of the hadith and they've commented by saying it's in the darkness of night where no one will even find out where no one will even know that you have done it the response that we should give, the response that we have to live by, inni akhaf Allah. I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. And the famous poet once says, وَإِذَا خَلَوْتَ رَيْبَةً فِي ظُلْمَةٍ وَالنَّفْسُ دَعَاتِ إِلَى التُّغْيَانِ فَاسْتَحِي مِن نَظْرَةِ الْإِلَاهِ وَقُلْ لَهَا إِنَّ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الظَّلَامُ يَرَانِي the famous poet once says, he says, if I think that I'm going to hide in the darkness of night and assume that no one can see me, remind yourself that the one that created the darkness can still see you. The sixth group of individuals and this is a group that inshallah, another thing, as we are walking out of the masjid, we can be a part of this group. The Prophet says, وَرَجْلٌ تَصَدَّقَ بِصَدَقَةٍ فَأَخْفَاهَا حَتَّى لَا تَعْلِمُ شِمَالَهُ مَا تَنْفَقُ يَمِينُ And an individual that's donating for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as he donates, his, he hides his donation so much that his right hand, his left hand doesn't know how much the right hand gave. And this is highlighting something along the lines of sincerity. How sincere are we when we give our donations? And, Allah, and the Prophet ﷺ hits sincerity in this next group of individuals. And this is something that is of the highest level and of the most difficult of actions. The Prophet ﷺ says, وَرَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهُ خَالِيًا فَفَاغَطْ عَيْنَهَا an individual that remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by himself in the darkness of night or alone where no one can see you where no one knows what you are doing where you are completely hidden from the sight of anyone and you begin to cry for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you, you, you humble yourself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
And in that humility, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises you. Man tawada'illahi rafa'ah. Whoever is humble for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will dignify them. How? On the day of judgment. That is the true dignity. That is the true success. The question becomes, what's our homework? How can we live this hadith? How can we embody this hadith? First and foremost, aspire to be one of these groups or multiple of these groups. Find out which group that's easiest for you and make that your first priority. But aspire to all of them. So that inshallah you at least hit one of them. Number two, struggle with yourself. Islam, Islam preaches that it's a marathon and not, and not a sprint. Hold yourself accountable every day. Your goal isn't to be Abu Bakr today or Sayyidina Abu Umar today. It's not realistic. But what is realistic is taking steps forward every single day. Ask yourself this question before you sleep. How did I do today? Am I better today than I was yesterday? And if the answer is yes, you are on the straight path. And if the answer is no, stop yourself before it's too late. Number three, realize that Islam was for all times and all places. And this hadith is an evidence of that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Islam so wise, so easy, so that every single one of us, based on their skill set, based on their abilities, can find a way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have no excuses. Those of us that are strong and healthy, do in what, give in what you can. Those of us that are rich, give in what you can. Every single one of us, no matter how young or how old, has an ability. Give in that sake. Give so that Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can shade us on the day where there is no shade but His shade. And lastly, Al-Ikhlas. If you notice from the hadith, all seven of them, the root of all of them is sincerity. How sincere are you in your actions? And the best way to hold yourself accountable to sincerity is ask yourself a very simple question. Would I do what I am doing if I was by myself? If I'm praying with my family and I'm reciting so beautifully, so patiently, so easily, a page, two, ten, but I'm praying by myself, I'm doing aerobics. Then ask yourself, who are you praying for? If I donate out loud hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, but in secret I donate nothing, or worse, ask yourself, who are you donating for? If you're Abu Bakr in the masjid, but Abu Jahl at home, who are you doing that for? That's the question that we have to ask ourselves. And that's how we have to hold ourselves accountable. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow every last one of us to be amongst the seven. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. Allahumma hadina wa ahdi bina wa jalna sabban li man ihtada. Allahumma hadina wa ahdi bina wa jalna sabban li man ihtada. عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينعى الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واستغفروه يغفر لكم وأقيموا الصلاة